All right. Good afternoon from Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. We're here at Borderlands Brewing with the founder, Mike. Right? Co-founder, yeah. Founder, co well, both both co founders all co founders can say they're founders. Yes. Right. That's so true. It's, it's not like uh, you don't say I'm a co parent. Right. Like I'm a like you're you're all you, rhombuses are squares, but not all squares are rhombuses. <laughs> Yes, that's that's the science answer, yeah. right? That's the science analogy. I, I thought we were talking about beer, but we're talking about <laughs> science. Um, but I think one of the so we're here at Borderlands Brewing. This is um, yeah, and Borderlands Brewing opened. In, we opened in sort of mid December of two thousand eleven. Okay, so I mean, been been at this for for a while. Yeah. Uh, but your your background, your day job is um, is not brewer. No, I'm a microbiologist. Yeah, so that's um, there's a lot of microbiology and brewer and brewing, but not a lot of microbiologists in in, uh, in, the, biz. in the biz. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there sort of is, and there's. I think a lot of the actual brewers yeah. sometimes have micro backgrounds. Um, and you find a lot of the owners have like engineering backgrounds right. all the time. So, right. Right. Yeah. Interested in that? It's uh, or they're just business. Yeah, but I, I think there's, you know, even, I've got some some clients who are, who are architects, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, oh yeah, and yeah. And so, and got yeah. into home brewing because they got into that, you know, how do we best use this space and how do we measure these things? And that kind of process, I think, translates the scientific process to, uh, it's a creative outlet, right to, right, to do that, to make something that is, you know, not purchased by the University of the Lab or the government, but... Know, is is like a different way to make. Uh, I just had two different Northeast IPAs, right? Um, right? So right. different, different biology, different ingredients, different, yeah. uh, uh, slightly different. So. My favorite equation is beer equals art plus science. Yeah. <laughs> so beer equals art plus science. Is yeah. that on a T-shirt? I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've but, seen it on a sticker. <laughs> it's the accessible T-shirt. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So so what was your like, like, what made you decide? You're sitting in the lab one day, looking at microbiology, and you say, "Hey, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go more, more full time into, um, into, 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 or launch the brewery." Yeah, it's funny. Um, when I was at Colorado State, that's where I went to undergrad. You know, Fort Collins is right. such a mecca of craft brewing. A couple, brewery. couple of breweries. And yeah, a couple. Just a few, of yeah, fairly yeah. well known. Yeah, breweries. yeah. Um, you know, it was late 90s and those breweries were really just taking off um, and it sort of pervaded the culture of Fort Collins even back then um, so you know I, I can remember the earliest keggers right you know from college and we would always start with you know six dull of sunshine wheat or right. you know whatever not tire or right or whatever um, and then we would go to the Milwaukee cheap Fest. stuff because yeah, that's yeah, what right, we yeah. could afford if we didn't care anymore. Um, so I think, you know, that influence from a very early you know, age when you, when you first start, right. you know, drinking and learning right. about all the different beverages, um, that had a big impact. And then later on when I was uh, finishing my degree, uh, I actually worked at uh, the Budweiser plant there. In uh, Colorado. In, yeah, in, in Fort Collins, Collins. yeah. Yeah, um, because they would hire science majors to do their quality assurance testing. Right. And they would sort of like test out college kids um, with that, pro you sort of had a provisional employment status and it right. was terrible. You had to like call in at like on Friday to find out if you were working the graveyard that weekend. <laughs> but, uh, so your price of admission to be, to work in the brewing space yeah, at a, at a, you know, a big company is you were like week to week. It wasn't it wasn't even month to month. It was well, yeah, it was week to week for your scheduling, which was right. terrible for a college student on the right. weekend. But um, it was twenty dollars an hour, and you wow. got three cases of beer a month. So I would always, good news. Bad news is it was Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, well, I would always pick up like a case of Amber Bach because right. that was like their attempt at craft right. beer at right. the time, and then I would just get two cases of Bud Light for parties. Right, right. So, so you, you never give, had give away beer and, and, and yeah. right. right. And it's funny because that experience working in that sort of corporate environment where there was like no freedom to like make any difference at all, you were just basically a cog in the wheel, you know, that really made me decide to go to graduate school because that position was so well paying and was, right. you know, probably one of the best positions I could get with my degree. Right. And I was like, 
this is one of the best musicians I can get with my degree. <laughs> so that's why I decided to go I, I think the, that experience you describe of, like, you think you want to be uh, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, an accountant or a lawyer or a, you know, architect or whatever, it's like, yeah. go see the guys that you think of as, you know, the guys or gals, and say, go, go check out the corner offices and see if, if you want to, like, peek behind that window and say, I want to grow up to be that. Yeah. It's, networking is so critical, I think people don't realize, just like, who do you know? Who can you talk to about right. this? Right. So you learn, even your failures networking are, are in, in 20 minutes, is, it's emotional, but it's, yeah. it's so bad. Yeah. 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 And it's true in beer, too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all about who you know right. in the beer world. Um, and you know everyone, just to be clear, <laughs> just know. to be clear. Not everyone. Who don't you know? Name someone you don't know. <laughs> I know a lot of Arizona people. That's all that. But you know people outside of Arizona too. Like, so, so I mean, I travel a little bit. Yeah. So I was in I was in Nashville, and, yeah. and people know you in Nashville. Really? Yeah. Whoa. The Southern Brewers Conference, right? So, um, so um, cool. yeah, the, I, I think so. I was I, I was here. I'm here in Arizona this week, and I was at the I was at the innovation dinner, and so Steve Wozniak mm -hmm. spoke. And, he said something really interesting. He said that all I really ever cared about was impressing other engineers. Mm -hmm. That's that's like he, like he wanted some like geeky engineer to go, dude, that's cool. Like that's like that's really clever. How to put that together? And I, you know, talking to brewers, two things. Like first of all, the technical track is always the most crowded space in any in any conference, right? Yeah. Because they're like, hey, the kettle sour to go. Yeah. But the other thing I think is really interesting when people say, oh, you're in sixteen ounce cans. Or sixteen ounce cans are you know, and that sort of, when you say art plus science makes beer, yeah. like, you can make beer, but you still have to sell it. Like, you still have to communicate that it's it's local. And I, I think one of the things that, that I think is interesting about your business and about um, Tucson is gen in general is you've got communities like Tucson, like Albuquerque, like, um, like, like some of the some of the smaller towns in Georgia like that are just starting to get their laws changing. And people in these towns are really passionate about the community. Yeah. But they still don't know when they go to that Total Wine or the liquor store that yeah. like, oh cool, bounce point. That looks crafty. Um, yeah. So you gotta so, so how do you so how do you do that in your in your community here? Yeah, well we're very, very fortunate in the state of Arizona because there's an incredible organization um, which is basically like Chamber of Commerce for independently owned uh, Arizona owned businesses only. It's called Local First Arizona. It's the largest of its kind in the country. Speak up a little oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the largest of its kind in the country and um, it does an incredible job of really promoting that idea. Right. Um, and I think Tucson in particular is already like that. It's right. such a very community focused town. Um, it doesn't have a lot of wealth. So I think people are very cognizant of that. And protective, too. It's yeah. like, whoa, dude, you're coming in from Phoenix? Yeah. Oh. Phoenix is yeah. a little bit different story because uh, it's the fifth largest city in the country. Right. You know, it, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who's actually from <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> um, you know, and that's that's just part of the, right. the situation there. And, and because of that, the national chains have really flourished right. there. Right. Um, and also, there's some there's some brand geometry, or you know, or just math that's hard to like. If you're if you're growing that fast, you know, big brands grow faster, and they have more momentum because right. they've got more. They like I look at data around this all the time, right? Like you, you send an email from a brand people recognize, or it's got a bigger brand, it's got a higher open rate, with the same content because right. you know, it's like people recognize. Yeah, good yeah. or bad, at least I know what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, so that's interesting. So. So specifically in, like, like how would you how would you describe? You know, I'd say a brand is an idea. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, a brand in itself is, is an idea. So, so what is the what, how would you describe your brand at Boulder Lens? I think for us, it's it's about it sounds corny, but it's about values. Um, I think that's a really critical feature of what our brand means. Right. Um, you know, we're we're extremely um, proactive in terms of trying to do things that are sustainable, trying to support uh, environmental causes in our community. Um, and people know that. Right. About us. How do they know that? 
I mean, <laughs> we, we do things right. all the time. So, um, I well, for one, I serve on um, a couple different boards, but one of them is an uh, organization called Conserve to Enhance, okay. uh, which is uh, uh, water conservation and riparian ecosystem right. health. Uh, there's organization. a there's a law school word riparian. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. only learned that word after serving on the yeah. board. It yeah. means the environment surrounding rivers. Yes. <laughs> any wa anybody, water, yeah. riparian rights. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. Right. So, um, so, and other than that, we're, we're constantly doing, you know, fundraisers. Tucson's a very interesting town because it has more nonprofits per capita than almost any other city in the country. Really? Yeah. Did not, did not realize that, yeah. but not surprised. Yeah. Right. So, um, it made sense for us, rather than to use traditional, like, advertising to promote our brand, to partner with nonprofits um, to expose their supporters to our brand, right. to show that we're supporting the community, right. and obviously the community supports, supports. us. 